Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. As we have people joining us, not only from Europe, but we also from other people from around the world, South America, Asia. We, I would like always to start by wishing everyone a wonderful day. My name is Juan, Inspir uh, founder of Inspira Growth. And in this segment of Growth Facts Experiences, we always are welcoming wonderful people, specialists, professionals, coach, persons that are able to share with us one uh, very valuable insights and tips about how can we increase the performance of our life, increase the quality of life that we, that we uh, endeavor every day. Now, today the, we have our, a friend and a special guest. Her name is Paula. And Paula is based in Switzerland. And before I can, hi, Paula, how are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Juan. It's so nice to be here. You know, uh, last, last time that we met with Paula in person was in Tallinn. And since then, we also have been the possibility, had the possibility to talk a few times. Uh, it's always great to have a conversation because we can also not only see the part of us as coach, but also as human beings, as parents, as, as persons that actually we are going through this life that we call this experience that we call life and share share basic some of the most uh, basic uh, situations that we have in life with whether it's with our parents with it's with our kids and find uh, common solutions paula if i may ask before we start uh, i would like to ex explain a little bit uh, to our audience uh, tell a little bit about yourself uh, if you allow me paula is a leadership and performance coach she's also a speaker uh, she's based in Switzerland, so if you are always in a, in a close by from Switzerland, then you know actually now today a person that you could contact in the region. She's a bri she's brilliant helping busy professionals, especially the ones that are look uh, looking to go out of that burnout bubble. They they find themselves whenever they are launching a new company, whenever they are leading a larger team corporate startups, startups, we always come in these situations and we need to ask for help. So no better seems actually to ask for help from someone that actually can help you with a guided training ships, like a, a coach, a transformational coach, a performance coach that can guide you to the right steps and also save you time. Because sometimes actually we, we try to find solutions that can take months. With that introduction, Paula, let me tell you, uh, welcome again. And uh, could you tell us a little bit to, with Paula? How did it come? Uh, how, how was your experience uh, to become a performance coach? Well, thank you. That was a wonderful introduction. Uh, really feels good to hear. And there's a lot of ideas that already bubbled up in my mind. Because, yes, my journey is not like I was born and I knew, okay, I'm going to be a coach one day. However, I think, well, I don't think, I know this is my purpose. This is my way of helping people. And um, somehow I believe we're all here and all of our purpose at some point is to help others. This is my chosen way, which didn't come, um, it, you know, like life is not a straight line, so it's not mine. And there's a lot of uh, going in every direction and sometimes at the same time, uh, finding my way so this was a dream of mine to become a coach like maybe I don't know many many years ago and I forgot about the dream because for the longest time me in every area of my life I did not believe in myself I did not believe that I matter or that my dreams matter and then that all cycled and circled into uh, burnout and then afterwards into a depression that was many years long and waking up or coming out of that depression alive uh, was is a miracle and I'm here now to serve people from that is a huge pool of knowledge that I have uh, aside from all, all the education and everything else but that that those experiences give me a lot of power and energy to be able to serve the way I serve in performance in performance meaning 
how you perform in life, how you perform as a leader, how you perform it at work as a parent, whatever. Also performing, like actually speaking in front of people and being on stage and things like that, because that's my background is in in dance and ballet and being on stage a lot. And and then so that's a and leadership is just a it's a passion of mine. I believe leaders, we are all leaders in one shape or form. However, the bigger the group of people that you lead, the bigger your influence is because every single person, not knowingly, but we always follow the leader. We, we, we observe, and this is subconscious. We're just looking at what the leader is doing and we kind of imitate that because obviously that's a, a model. That's something that we look up to. And so uh, leaders are the influencers whether they want it or not. And to have a positive influence is important. And that's my contribution in this world to make it a little bit of a better place to talk and listen with listen to leaders and help them become better so that they can, through their work, help others become better. And also, you know, that goes to every part of life, whether you're a parent or not, if you're, you are a sister, brother, um you are a lot of things in your life and there's always a chance for you to be the role model and that's what i try to be and what i try to do in all my work that's it you know in, in, indeed this is a, a very important point that we're talk, touching uh indeed parents they are leaders they are, they are leading the example they are being the role model of their children so if one of these children becomes a big leader uh, a, a woman representing a community a woman a woman a man representing a government uh, they, they all come from the first lessons that they get from their parents so when mm -hmm. it comes about this for example Paula talking about this responsibility uh, how do you how will a leader understand what, what will be the challenges that they will normally be facing in terms of how to improve their performance what what are normally the challenges that we encounter i think number one challenge is that we think too much okay or yeah related to that thinking <laughs> you know that you are responsible for everything in, you know, if you're a big level leader, a CEO of, uh, um, you know, thousands of people, a company that's huge, or, you know, you're a president of a country, yes, you have a lot of responsibility. However, you are not responsible for anyone else's decisions about how they perform in life, how they choose things that they choose even the highest level CEO or the president of the biggest country in the world will not be able to do that. And to take on the, the thought that I'm responsible for all of these people is, you know, it's just too much. We think too much. And, in, and I think that's, that is in general, the biggest challenge is to simplify and simplify your thought simplify your mind so that you're really focused and you're focused on the things that that feel good that you trust your intuition because we do all have that some people um yeah that could be controversial because there are a lot of leaders who think oh intuition like don't 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 go with that go only with facts but look Facts are only facts that come from somewhere else. There's always a chance that there's something else that you haven't seen or you haven't learned. But your intuition will tell you whether it's a good way to go or not so good way to go with a decision. And to clear out the path to listen to that intuition is important. And that's one way of doing that is to be able to figure out how can you clear your mind out of that cluster of thoughts that sometimes can block you. Of course, you know, we've got so many thoughts in our mind going through every single second, but then it's your choice to, and you have the choice to take one and 
discover more about that thought or not, or let go. So I think one, and that is like a really high level thing, like it's, it's not, you know, there are practical tools to do that. But that's at the highest, like, umbrella level looking at, well, I think this is what is um, blocking a lot of leaders from becoming really extraordinary. Yeah, yes, I agree, completely agree. And I, I was even re relating it, uh, considering, um, because normally we, we are always surrounding ourselves with data in, our, in, in my company. So mm -hmm. we were even thinking, uh, analyzing how many thoughts or ideas can we have per day? And uh, that's how we came up with some uh, studies where normally a person, they say they, they even there, they can have between 3,000 3, to 6,000 thoughts per day. And that's only by yourself. Now, with all what you get now from the exter external world, it's, it can go really uh, out of control if we don't find tools and ways on how to si silent down or even to filter mm -hmm. what comes to us every day. How, how do you see it as well from, for example, in, in terms of these practices, how do you normally recommend a, a, a CEO, a founder, uh, a founder, a woman, man, um, in terms of how to start the day? That, that's like a, a, something really, I just thought about it quite a bit this morning because I wrote a post about it. Oh, yeah. in. <laughs> yes. And this is like intention is everything. And it, it, there is no time frame that is the perfect time frame. Every, every time frame is perfect for any intention. You can have an intention for the next hour or for this entire day for the month, for the year, for your life. And these intentions, well, they are based on your values. But if you haven't done the work with values and you want to just get one thing, you know, keep yourself focused, set an intention for the day. Like one intention is enough. For example, my intention for today is to keep things simple. So if everything, and that's like a little thing that I like, if I had a pocket I don't have pockets right now <laughs> I could put a stone in my pocket and that would be like my intention and, and it would be there with me all the time you know I can feel it oh, okay every decision every action every time I have something to decide or when I look around is there something that I can do that is in line with that intention so for me, simplicity for today, it could be the same tomorrow, but this is a process I would just recommend doing every morning. When you start the day, it's like, what's my one intention? What's that for today? And then keep in line with that to keep your focus because we you know distractions, my goodness, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you got to have that little stone in your pocket to keep you coming back to your focus, to keep you coming back to your intention and the intention is positive yeah well, i don't think that anyone would make an intention well i'll be just mean today <laughs> like that's what well, you know i hope not and i don't think that we humans would be making intentions like that um so in inherently intention is something positive because it's something that you set that will today help you make some steps or even just one step towards a bigger goal, a bigger vision that you have. If it's your company, you know you have goals, you have visions, you want to see your company in this and this place in this certain amount of time. Well, that daily intention is your way to keep your focus. Yeah. Every day, even if you have a vision that's 10 years in, down the line, that 10 years is a long time. But then again, you know, help do something, some little tiny, little simple thing every day that will help you keep your focus in that 10 year goal or that bigger vision. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So sort of like token reminders that take us through the day, uh, deciding really what is really good for us. 
that, that's why you, you mentioned as well that that's why I, and I completely agree that's why values are such a big important part of our process of discovery not only for 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 companies but for ourselves as well how how, yeah. else, how would you recommend for example if I may ask a, 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 a way how to dis discover the values that one represents uh, yeah I mean discovering values is, is a, sometimes a bigger process it's kind of like looking back and looking at things that you want and kind of finding out things that <clears throat> for example topics of topics of conversation or if you watch tv what kind of things that you like to watch on tv or netflix or the things that you like to listen to what is, is there a common theme you know uh, what is it and then something sometimes even a, asking your question what really what really ticks me off and that can guide you towards like well, what's important to me like if if for example hearing someone argue ticks you off well maybe that's pointing you towards an, an, a value that's peace or tranquility or something like this like you really like to have peace in your life and it, dirt, it somehow disturbs you when you hear people arguing or and then that might come up in your life in the kinds of programs that you watch if you need maybe you don't even you choose not to watch anything just because you like the piece so you'd rather fill your house with peaceful music or something like this so things from your life that will point you to the direction of what's really important to me in my life and those things that are really important to me where would I not do compromise like if peace was a value and that you live you notice that you live in your life you would not move probably into the middle of a very busy city by the busiest road where there's a lot of noise that you can't block out. Like that would not be a compromise you'd be willing to make because peace is so important to you. Or for example, for me, well, yeah. peace is in my life. I don't allow my kids to play any kind of games that intention had that where the intention is to you know kill someone there's a lot of games out there that um, that are in the intention of the game or the goal of the game is to kill other people i'm like no that doesn't go with my family <laughs> yeah I, i completely understand you know uh one of the values for example uh, I just had my daughter just right next to me for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my values indeed has has come from observing uh, my relationship with my family mm -hmm. and how that really molded uh, even the way how I look, how how I how I act around. Uh, I consider that, for example, I just I always want to be close to my daughter. Uh, wherever I go, and, and for example, she was just coming here because we 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 have a plan day for later on, and you know, five, six, seven years ago, I was completely in, into the C level mode. I, as the director of a of a corporate, I I used to wear every day like really tight hair, completely shaved. Uh, and the way how I express, uh, I, I would say that in that moment was like confidence of or power was by having this type of Wall Street kind of look, which sometimes when I see the pictures of myself like that, I don't recognize myself anymore. I, I, don't, I, I, I love my hair, how the freedom of it. I, I, one of my values is freedom. So I guess mm -hmm. you can see that even in my hair, <laughs> but you know, indeed, you, what you were mentioning, how, how the relationship that we have with our families um, has to do a lot even with the values that we represent. Yes, because that's like, if you have kids, yeah. um, then the big question is like, what are the, va what are the values that I'd like, you know, through my example of how I live my life uh, to 
how what I'd like to pass on. Of, of course, in the end, I mean, they decide for themselves what are their core values. And that's their decision. However, with my influence as a something, I like to set an example, like just talking about it won't do it. And that's the same for whether it's for your kids or whether it's in your team or, you know, you're building a company and that's whatever relationship it is, it's the example that shows and not the words because like kids will show that very fast. They don't believe you. Like if you just say things and you don't do it, no chance. So, you know, that's a, that has been a big lesson. I mean, yeah, with two kids, I, I, I learn a lot from them and I, I take that into my coaching as well. I mean, I learn my, they're my teachers. <laughs> You're on mute. Yes, Paula, and 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 this and this is taking me to my next uh, to my next question that has to do with something that is uh, happening in to people in my circle. And uh, the question has come to me, but I always love to ask the same questions to people uh, around me that actually could give a different perspective or or a similar perspective. Uh, it's about founders, for example. Founders, uh, I have a, 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 a friend, uh, her name is Maria. And for example, she just had a kid of, uh, she, the kid is now about six months. So mm -hmm. it's a baby. Um, and as I know Maria, she always has been a very hard entrepreneur, uh, very pushing the limit. Uh, and creating creating different companies creating different entities creating um, large communities so then it's when it comes to the situation it's like wow now you have a baby and uh, now you are you are not in the same uh, even in the same possibility to manage uh, these kind of businesses or or that's as at least that's the impression that everyone gets we cannot do this two at a time how can we solve this how can we how can we fix or, or, or fix ourselves or fix our life? So how what, what kind of advices would you give them, for example, to these new new parents that also are serial entrepreneurs, for example? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, and I think one thing is just, first of all, accept that, yes, when you have a child, things are different in every sense like there are people who say oh nothing will change things will no if you don't accept the fact that yes a new life has entered your life that you know it coming from you and something that you love more than anything else in the world that changes you and that changes your world in such a huge way that will influence everything that you do from there on so accepting that and be like, all right, well, this. what about you take it as an adventure? Okay, this is a new beginning. It's a brand new adventure that I've never had before because, if, you know, even if you have multiple kids, you've never had that experience of having, I don't know, if you have five kids and you have number six, well, you never experienced being, you know, a mother or father of six kids. So even that is an adventure. And especially with the first kid when, you know, you really have no idea and you probably received like a million different advices from everyone like this is how it's going to be and it's yet it's different so accept it and be like all right well how can I approach this new situation from this new point of view uh, I have a baby well in the beginning no you can't be as involved in building businesses and being an entrepreneur or anything when you're a mother, first of all, if you're nursing your child, that like physically will bind you to some sort of rhythm. <laughs> and, and that is just how it is. And so, and that acceptance is helpful because then you don't give yourself that pressure like, oh, but I should be, you know, uh, doing this. I should be having calls here and I can do this, you know, baby is out of my body now. And we, of course, they, they sleep a lot, you know, no. Give yourself a break because first of all, as if you're, if you're a mother, you know, you carried, you were pregnant for quite a while and that's going to, you know, give your body a break at least, you know, it's going to take a while to, you know, find a new kind of balance after that. So 
to accept that and be like, look at yourself as a whole, like your body, your physical body, your mind, that love that enters your mind in the moment that your child is born, it will change a lot of things. Like I'm not a scientist, but I'm a mother of two. And this is my personal experience. It changes a lot of things in your thoughts and allow that to be. And then you find a way, okay, well, if it if that starts by seeing, okay, timeline, well, when do I want to be back at, you know, working however much you decide you want to work? If, you, if you're an entrepreneur, may, you know, it's probably 100%, especially if it's a startup phase, you, you're probably not going to compromise any, somehow you can't even. And so how can you integrate that family life? Like just integrating like you know at some point you know do I need a babysitter a daycare place do, do I how do I organize this um like just very concrete things so that whenever I do work and then you can make this distinction when do I work and when do I not work like how do I want to be uh, with my kids and for my life right now my kids are not babies anymore but I organize it like this I, I'm building my business I'm I'm divorced, so I have my kids with me every second week. Now I know their school schedule. And in the weeks that they're with me, I'm strict in this is when I work, this is when I don't work. And that is one of the hardest things to do when you're an entrepreneur, when you're just in a starting phase building your business to make that distinction. And, you know, and be kind with yourself, like just be kind with yourself. If, if one day you feel like, oh, I didn't get much sleep at all. And, you know, what if you just plan 70% so that you always have some room, some freedom to move around. So if there was, especially with babies or small kids, if like the sleepless nights are there and they're re real, and yes, your body cannot function if you didn't sleep. So, and your brain cannot function. You can't think, you can't focus. So if you planned less than the full weeks, you planned 70%, you still have some ways to move around. So for those days where you just didn't get to sleep or whatever, uh, something happened or you know, the, the, your child got a big tantrum or something you cannot predict and you cannot control. So how can you then still keep yourself, you know, sane and allow yourself to be kind with yourself? If you plan 100%, there is no freedom to, you know, then you're really hard on yourself. And it's pretty much like pre-programming a burnout at some point or an explosion whenever your child says one thing. <laughs> Wow. Well, yeah, it resonates so much. You know, uh, I was just recently talking to a, a professional working with in the healthcare mm -hmm. and with teachers, mainly, and she was mentioning that one of the issues is as well is, is, is also having the awareness of how mm -hmm. our months really work for men and for women. We, mm -hmm. we are just different. Uh, knowing when our energy is at the biggest level and the highest level and how can actually share with your complete month to be able to understand how your body, how your energy, how your mind reacts to your surrounding. Mm -hmm. So I love it. I love it. I need awareness, uh, having a clear mind of what, what's, what's going on in your life. Yeah, and embracing new things, like embracing everything, like when, you know, with or without kids, what if you chose to embrace your days as adventures, as something like to explore, so as something you get curious about? Yeah. What if that curiosity took over, you know, the need to know everything or the need to have a perfect plan? Because, you know, God, there is no perfect plan. So, <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, the, the plan is only just to have a sort of like direction. Uh, yes but it's very yeah. flexible it should be very flexible yeah you can make a plan but i don't i i'm really bad at remembering good quotes but there are a, a plenty of quotes about plans and yeah great that you make a plan 
that will actually never work. Yeah. Yeah. But it can help you. Making the plan can help you. However, knowing you hey, look, the plans don't work. Like your kids just can't because there's a lot of room for, and I call it magic. Allow the room for magic to happen. You don't know everything and you don't know what things are coming your way. So, you know, even that planning your 70% of your week, whether you have small kids or no kids uh, or whatever, might be a helpful tool. Yeah. Like, oh, I can breathe a little bit more because look, I planned if I can do all of this in 70% of my time, you still have 30% to, well, if nothing happens, you got more free time. And if something happens, it's not like you you have to work 150%. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I noticed, I, I saw one sentence the other day with someone saying, I'm not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow. And the other person went, oh, how exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. Great. Paula, that, that's indeed. Uh, Beautiful answer. Uh, exactly the answer that I believe that many of my my colleagues, many of my audience uh, are expecting to hear, especially the new parents. Now we have a new uh, segment also in Grow Fact Experiences, Paula, where normally we 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 ask the guest a question that was set by the previous uh, or previous guest. Uh, normally it's a surprise question, so normally. It, we we know we know we, we we tell you who it came from, but and and you get in to make also a question after that for the next guest. Now the next guest, of course, it's a surprise. Uh, but the previous guest, her name was a she was she was it's a coach, but that has to do with hypnotherapy, and she's from France. And Alice, you know, uh, Alice was mentioning the following question. Alice was asking, if you will be able to have everything in your, all, all, all the possibilities, everything, if you knew that you wouldn't fail, what will be, what will be the objectives that you have been set for yourself in the coming years? Hmm, that's a good question. I saw, I heard yeah, <laughs> I wonder. It's like, you know, trying to set my brain in a mode to think like that. Oh, man. I think I would just enjoy everything much more. Like embrace things that are hard and knowing, look, I can't fail. Exactly. Oh, what freedom. But freedom, you did yeah? Yes. And be like, well, you know, I don't care because I won't fail. This is an, actually, that's an attitude that you can take. Look, what is a failure? Are there really like failures or can you see them as lessons? Exactly. Wonderful. It's just one more step in your yeah. Because failures your are a part of like failing. I mean, meaning probably... That everything that I go on is like it's somehow a success. But then I think, well, actually, you know, failures, well, we those lead to successes. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect, Paul. Thank you very much. And what kind of question would you like to ask? Oh. Oh, this one. I love this because joy is one of the things that I like. It, leadership outside inside of the leadership as a parent everything joy is something that goes through everything like if there's no joy well why why are you doing it <laughs> you know so what's one thing that you can do every day that you know will just bring you more joy that will make you a more joyful person in everything that you do Ooh. the one thing that will bring you the most joy every single day Wow, I will ask that myself every day. <laughs> well, I, yes. I, I think I, I, I have this, I have this thing that I'm calling one million, uh, one billion objectives, uh, where I just want to get one billion. For example, I want to get one billion hugs. I know it's impossible, but 
why not to try it? Maybe who knows? More people join, and I just like to hug, give hugs to everyone now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that brings me you as well. Yes. Wonderful, Paula. And so, Paula, in Switzerland, in Europe, if a founder, if an a CEO, uh, someone of our, our community would like to get in touch with you, how could they reach you best? The best is, well, just to follow and reach me through LinkedIn. I mean, on LinkedIn, I post uh, like six times a, a week usually. And um, I do, I'm very active there. So that's the best way. And then also, also, I mean, I have a website, which I need to, you know, work on. That's the continuous project. <laughs> However, of course, you can reach me through the website. And there's a blog that I write. Um, I like expressing myself through writing um so that's one way uh yeah i think those are the best ways to wonderful indeed uh linkedin indeed is 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 certainly the biggest network professional network at the moment um uh, i i believe i heard it was about 220 million active users weekly oh wow so that's really a, a large potential in terms of B2B, B2C uh, and co collaborations. So, Paula, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful moment. Always loving to talk to you. Uh, let's, let's repeat this, of course. <laughs> yes. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank, thank you, you for this call. Um, thank you so much. And so everyone, please, uh, we are going to make sure to put all the information from Paula with the video, um, the, her LinkedIn, her directions. Also, we're going to add it in our social media posts. Uh, and we're very active, especially in Instagram and TikTok as well. Uh, if you like this comment, if you like this uh, kind of knowledge and you would like to get more, you would like to meet Paula, please uh, subscribe to our, our channel. Um, be, don't forget to also give a like. Now, I wish everyone a wonderful day as well. Thank you very much. On behalf of everyone in Inspire Growth, and Paula, thank you very much again. Thank <laughs> Take you. Take care. Bye-bye.